So could you uh, say your name? My name is Jonathan Pallant. And what's your day job? Uh, my day job is as an embedded software engineer. Okay. And um, why did you, or how did you hear about the Zero to ASIC course? Uh, I came across the Zero to ASIC course, I think, uh, on Twitter. Uh, they would think I saw some some posts go part, past and I'd heard about... Um, what Open Lane um, were were doing an eFabulous and and sort of how they sort of related to Skywater. They're all sort of new and interesting terms that were that were floating around that I was sort of aware of, but didn't really understand how they fit together. Um, I'd done some FPGA work in the past, and I thought it'd be good to to brush up on that, stretch myself as a as a software engineer, and and stretch out into into new things and. Yeah, it just seemed like a seemed like a really really interesting course that would that would take me to some some new places and build up my knowledge. Cool. So um, my next question is like, why did you want to do it? But you've kind of partially answered that. So is there anything else you want to add? I think the idea of getting so as an embedded engineer, it's always for me about the 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 words you type on the screen having a, a real world feedback i mean i've I've literally got a a board next to me now and a medic board that i built and there's an led blinking on it and it's that classic thing i i made that happen and i guess having your own silicon made and coming back with a chip that is as you've designed it is just pushing that to the to the next level it's the ultimate in in real world consequences to the to the software you've written cool nice answer um so for you what was the kind of the biggest value of the course the the thing i took away from it most of all was just a sense of how all of these pieces fit together as uh, building a custom asic is a is a non-trivial uh, process otherwise i guess i guess everyone would be, would be at it and there's an awful lot of pieces that that need to be put together to make this work and it's just having that understanding of okay I understand what the basic cells are, and I understand how uh, what software we need to write the the test benches. I've got a good grasp of Cocoa TB, and I've brushed up on my on my very log, and I understand the various compilers and the various steps it that goes through in the hardening process. It was just being able to to take all of those terms that I was sort of aware of before, but couldn't put them in context, and understand that that big picture about how you get from from A all the way through to to Z and some chips coming out of the end. Cool. So the uh, title of the course works out well then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was the part that you enjoyed the most? Uh, I I think the parts that uh, that I enjoyed the most were it's going back to the to the Verilog and seeing test benches pass. In particular, the 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 waveform viewer. So. You, you get, sort of get to the, the latter parts of the course, and you're you're simulating the entire Caravel system on chip with a Risk Five core, and then being able to drill down into everything inside that core. I can log the the program counter. I can log all the all the address and data buses, and you can just see in exquisite detail what the system is doing. And it's doing that because I programmed it. I wrote some firmware in C, and it got loaded onto the Risk Five core, and it was it was executing the the instructions that I gave it. So yeah, being able to drill down into that detail was really fascinating. You do get a lot of traces in the end, though, don't you? You do. You've got you've got to be reasonably well well disciplined. You can't just go and select all and throw Open it all, all into no. the into the waveform viewer. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, and um, congratulations, because you made it all the way to the end and uh, taped out on MPW3. So could you um, explain a bit about uh, your, the design that you taped out? So the, the design I came up with was called Zoob, which is like the tube, but for a Z80. And it sits on the Z80 bus, and it occupies a couple of addresses, and it presents um, a couple of FIFOs. So the Z80 chip can post data into the FIFOs, and that then ends up in the RISC-V core inside the Caravel sock, and the RISC-V core can send messages back again. As to what you want to send back and forth, well, that's that's entirely up to, to whoever's writing the, the software. So you could program the RISC-V core to be 
an SD card interface. You could program it to be a UART interface or, or an SPI interface. But the, the piece that was missing with this bit of silicon, this bit of logic that would sit on the bus, it would watch for bus traffic, it would see writes to specific addresses, and then it would capture that data and buffer it in such a way that it could be presented off to the other core and then doing the reverse process. So the second core can write to the FIFO and then that gets made available as and when the, the Z80 wants it. So it does a read on a certain address and then that takes an item out of the FIFO and, and, and delivers it. So it's that kind of, I guess in the past, it might've been a bunch of 7.4 series glue logic, um, but that's just involves an awful lot of chips. So just having that design, someone can roll it out into an FPGA, someone can, as we've done, we can make an ASIC out of it, that you just plug into to one of these retro computer buses and then what you do on the other side, that, that's up to your, your imagination. Cool. Looking forward to see if that works. <laughs> yeah, so am I. The test bench has passed, but... <laughs> Great. And um, would you recommend this course to someone else? Oh, absolutely. It's, there's there's a, a lot of material. It's not uh, it's not an easy course. This is not one of those things where you, you know, you pop off for a day and you you uh, you read some material and you answer a couple of easy questions and they give you a certificate at the end of it. This is uh, this is a program of sort of self-directed learning in a way you get given course materials and they explain what needs to happen. But you have to put quite a bit of work in to, to do some research, uh, do some background reading, maybe um, work through the examples, try not to peek at the solutions if you can, uh, if you can avoid it. Um, but they also have, have to bring something of your own to the course. So you will get to a step that says, okay, that's great. You've been through some examples. Now do the same thing, but for your own design. And at that point, you need to have an answer of well, what what do I want to do? What am I what am I going to make? So you have to sort of bring some creativity with you um, and some problems uh, you need to solve. But no, it's yeah, it's hugely rewarding. Great, fantastic. Okay, so um, any last thoughts from you? Uh, I, I hope there's going to be a, going to be an MPW four, and yeah, if you've got any interest in in um, yeah, how the sausage is made, you should uh, you should get on the course and you should you should dig in and and find out more and yeah, maybe one day you'll get some some chips in the post that that contain your design. I mean, this this was the work of um, of secret witches and wizards in mysterious cloaks casting strange incantations over a cauldron this was all sort of secret stuff and i love that this project is trying to do to silicon design what the open source community has been trying to do with software for the for the last 30 years and i guess more recently in in gateway for for fpgas but yeah this feels like a a next logical step and i think we'll look back and go well of course you can make your own chips that's that's just a thing and it will just be it'll be obvious and commonplace and i look forward to that Great. Well, thanks a lot for your time, Jonathan, and um, see you around. No problem.